uh, let's look at this one here because you might have tried to do something algebraically with it. And again, you're not necessarily going to be doing anything algebraically the way you've thought of doing that, where you can can cancel some factors and things like that. But you can look at it with this, which is sounds very uh, theoretical, eh? Sandwich or squeeze theorem. But essentially, if you have some function where it's not obvious what what the limit's going to be, uh, you can use other functions that you know of where it is obvious. The first one we looked at, probably you can see that the limit of this is going to be zero as you go either way, just because you have a finite number over something that's getting bigger and bigger. And intuitively, you know that if you take one and divide it up amongst a larger and larger number, you've known that since you're a little kid, right? One cookie... A certain number of people, how much of the cookie do you get, or pizza, or whatever it is, right? Um, if you have the larger number of people you have, how much, what fraction of the cookie do you get? Smaller and smaller and smaller, right? The more people that are there, so the bigger that number is, the smaller the result is. So if you have an infinite number of people, you get zero. You get zero, right? You get nothing. Infinite number of people. So this one's sort of more obvious that you're going to, you, if you want to think about what the limit of that is, you think 1 over infinity. You can't really substitute in infinity for x, but you can, you can, uh, you can think about what this is, right? 1 over infinity, basically that's 0. It's not so obvious what's happening with this function because if you think of this as putting infinity here, like sine infinity over infinity, who knows, right? it's not so obvious of what it's going to be because this always changes and this is changing as well. But what you can do is use two known functions and that's what that's what this is all about here. Okay. So even though it's not going to be algebraically like you think of it as a bunch of algebraic steps, we'll look at it. First let's look at it on a graph and then we can uh, we can write the algebra for it. If you put in your 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 function y equals sine x divided by x. I'm not sure if I need brackets on there or not, but let's see. Might as well put them in to be safe. Okay, so there's that function. We'll uh, adjust it a bit so we can see what's happening. I'm only going to look at one side of it because we don't really need the other side. And we will oops, bring this back here. Okay, so that thing starts to level out. Really nice scale there, isn't it? Let's change that. That didn't really do anything, did it? Let's take that off so maybe it's going to do its own thing. Okay, it doesn't matter if we have the scale in terms of pi or not. We can still see what's happening. It levels off there as you go. Um, graphically, you can look at the graph and say, well, it's going to head towards zero. But if you want to show algebraically it's going to head towards zero, you've got to use two other known functions. And those two known functions are the one we looked at first, right? If I put in y equals 1 over x, it's going to touch the top of that function, right? It just touches the top of that. Let's even make this a different color here so we can see this. I guess I should have put the other one in first, but how about orange today? Okay, so there's one on top of that. And you can put another function on the bottom, y equals negative 1 over x, and we can make that one a different color too, as exciting as that is. Orange again. Okay, so you can, you're squeezing it between those two functions. You can argue algebraically why it should be between those two functions. But before we write the algebra, let's see what's happening here, right? I mean, you're, you're squeezing it in between two functions where you know what the what the limit is, and come on, right? The farther you go out there, it's squeezed, and all you see is one big orange line eventually, right? Okay, that's why it's called the the squeeze or sandwich theorem. You're sandwiching in between two other functions that you know, and you can see what the limit is. Algebraically, what you can what you can argue here is, you can say sine x over x. If you you know what happens with this function. Does it have a maximum and does it have a minimum, sine x? All right, let's 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 just think of sine x. What's the maximum of sine x is ever going to be? One. What's the minimum? Negative one. 
if you want now sine x divided by x, if you divide all of them by x, you can say this function has to be less than or equal to this. And it has to be greater than or equal to this. So this is, this is not an algebraic argument that you do a whole bunch of steps. It's an algebraic argument where you start with this premise that you know, and you add in this, this to make it the function that you want, right? Sine x over x. And you can argue now that if that's true, the limit of each of these has to be the same thing, right? If this function is always less than this function and always greater than this function, if you know what the limit of these two are, which you do, right? You can, you can see what the limit of that one is. This is going to be a known limit because you can say fixed number over infinity, it's got to be zero. This, this limit, right, as x approaches infinity has to be, right, this limit as x approaches infinity of negative one over x, the limit of this one has to be between those two. Okay, the limit of this one, sine x over x, I don't know why I'm making the whole thing orange now, but as x approaches infinity, this limit has to be between the other two. The other two are known to be zero because you have a function where it's easy to see what it is, right? If you have this and you have something you can just think of, one over infinity, that's zero, right? One over infinity. You think of that as zero. If that's if it's if this limit is less than or equal to zero, and it's greater than or equal to zero on the other side, greater than or equal to zero. If something's less than or equal to zero and greater than or equal to zero, what must be true? It has to be zero, right? Therefore, three little dots. Therefore, in a triangle. Therefore, limit as x approaches infinity of sine of x over x equals zero. You could put some words in there too, right? Since it's both less than and greater than zero, that's what, that's what this is all about. Usually we're going to use this for functions that involve trig functions like this, right? Where you can start with this premise that this has to be between certain values. It isn't that we're going to use this a lot, but it's, it's worth seeing that sometimes you have to kind of make an argument for it rather than just do a bunch of factoring and canceling and stuff like that. So you, you can show things analytically even if you can't cancel and simplify the function. You can argue that it's between two other ones. You haven't done a lot of stuff like this in your in the math that you've done. You haven't done a lot of sort of making an argument or sort of proving something by logical statements like that. But that's what that is. Uh, the other thing we should talk about is if you want to use these properties of limits here, you can split things apart. This is hard to see what this what's going to happen here, but you can split this apart and say limit as x approaches infinity of 5x over x plus the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x. If you have a if you have something where the bottom is one value there, you can split it apart. This is easy because it's the limit of what? 5x over x is 5, right? What was the limit of this? Sine x over x, that's one that we kind of just have to know. What was the limit of this function? 0, right? So we have 5 plus 0. This is going to be a 5. You can check it by graphing this function and seeing that it's, that it's 5, but it will be 5. Okay, we will have to come back to that next time.